Good morning, it's February 23rd, and this is To My Little Friends. Well, some of us can all remember the famous quote from James Carville in 1992 when Bill Clinton was running against George H.W. Bush. It's the economy, stupid. In 1992, the United States was experiencing an economic recession, and President Bush was perceived to be out of touch with the average American. And this point was hammered home when Bush could not answer the question of what a gallon of milk cost. Now, I'm willing to give Bush a pass on this response because he had served eight years as the vice president and four years as the president. In those 12 years, I highly doubt he had spent much time in a grocery store. Fast forward to 2024, and once again, you could use that phrase, it's the economy, stupid. And this is what is perplexing the Biden campaign. They see inflation coming down, gas prices while rising right now are still lower than the record highs earlier in his administration, the stock market continues to rise, and unemployment is down to what it was when he entered office. They coined the phrase Bidenomics to tout the present success, and he's gotten a bit testy with the media for not promoting his economic agenda more vigorously. But they're looking at the electorate with blinders on. There's a large group of people that are doing very well in today's economy. Pollster Scott Rasmussen has done a deep dive on the 1%, urban dwellers with postgraduate degrees and incomes over 150000 These, by the 4 to 1 margin, support Joe Biden and his climate policies and progressive agenda. These professionals, particularly women, are increasingly the base of the Democratic Party. Whether as professionals or the ultra-wealthy, these Democrats can be voting their consciences, but also their class interests. Government, social assistance, and health care account for 56% of the 2.8 million new net jobs over the past year, and nearly all employment gains in blue states, such as New York and Illinois. Professionals concentrated in government and largely public-funded health programs have benefited mightily under Biden. Those who worked directly for Washington recently received a nice 5% raise from their president. The other side of the Democratic base, wealthier voters, are beneficiaries of the strong strong stock market. The top 10% own roughly 60% of all stocks, but most others have holdings averaging $40,000. In contrast to real incomes, which have grown barely 1.7% since 2020, stock income has burgeoned by nearly 50%. But these people are not middle America and many of them have their groceries delivered or eat out much more than the average American. A significant number of them are single or have one to two children at most. They have these high paying jobs and they live in their own bubble. But when you go to more rural parts of America, you find a different lifestyle and people are faced with very different problems. Most of them don't have those high paying jobs. Most of them are not possessing graduate degrees and many of them have larger families. These are the Americans that are in the grocery stores every week and see the effect inflation has brought on feeding their families. And just as George H.W. Bush, I suspect Joe Biden as well, did not know the price of milk, it puts them out of touch with the reality faced by millions of voters. There are other factors that keep the public feeling uneasy or downright angry about the current economy. The housing market is stuck. Prices for housing have risen, but the cost of a mortgage is so high it stalled the housing market. If you wanted to buy a $500,000 home in 2020, the average interest rate on a mortgage was about 3.5%. That would mean your monthly payment for the interest and principal was about $2,250. You would then have to add in tax and insurance. But today, that same loan will cost you about $3,400 plus the tax and interest. That puts the price of a mortgage out of the reach of many people. And this has a cascading effect. If you cannot afford to buy that first house, for a young couple, then the person trying to sell the house cannot afford to buy the larger home they aspire to, and up the chain it goes. And the Federal Reserve has lately indicated that any reduction in interest rates will have to wait until later in the year. And there are some other factors that, in my opinion, are hurting Joe Biden, the candidate. His continued zeal to wipe out student debt plays well among the educated liberals in urban centers, but it does not help in more industrial parts of the country. Most of these voters don't have thousands of dollars in student debt, and they don't like the idea of their tax dollars paying off the loans of the type of kids that laughed at them in high school for not going to college. Bush's push for climate policy plays well with his liberal elites, but it has the opposite effect those outside those urban centers. They don't want to be forced to buy an electric car. First, it costs more than a normal car, and second, they don't want to have to find a place to charge it every night. If you don't have a garage to put your car in, with an electric carport, then you're not interested in them. And millions of people live in neighborhoods where they don't have that garage. 
So breaking this all down, a Monmouth University poll found that 16% of Americans say middle-class families have benefited by Biden's economic policies, while 45% say middle-class families have not benefited. Only 21% say that poor families have benefited, and 40% say poor families have not benefited. But the numbers change when they talk about wealthy people. About 41% say their wealthy families have benefited a lot. The fact remains that the White House can beat the drum all they want, along with their friends in the media, about how Bidenomics is working. But if the voters in the middle class and those outside these urban centers of elites don't think those benefits are reaching them, then that becomes an economic fact that matters the most. And that is why Biden's poll numbers on handling the economy are so low and why it's trailing in the key swing states as we head into March. And that spells trouble come November. It's been to my liberal friends. Thanks for listening.